Hey YouTube, welcome back to Vintage on Vintage. Today I wanna to do a little bit of a profile about the 1960s and the era it was for pitchers. Uh, so a couple things happened um, as to why pitchers got better. After Roger Maris made a run um, at Babe Ruth's record, uh, the commissioner Ford Frick, who was a friend of Ruth's, didn't think it was right to see 260 and 270 hitters challenging Ruth. So he convinced the owners to uh, take the, widen the strike zone back to the pre-1950, so which would uh, help pitchers uh, dominate a bit more. And that played a huge role in some of the, the 60s dominance. I think, me personally, I think there were three other things that come into play that don't get enough credit. One would be expansion. Two would be uh, the growth of night games, which I think both helped the pitchers. But maybe more importantly, there were just some bigger parks being built. Dodger Stadium and Candlestick Park were notoriously notorious pitchers' parks, as was the Astrodome when it first came up. So, um, but that coincided with this guy's um, dominate dominance. These rule changes and Sandy Fo Koufax clicked. And from 1962 to 1966, Sandy Koufax may have had one of the best runs ever as a starting pitcher. He was on the uh, leader cards across the board for more than five years. You know, he finished those five seasons 111 and 34. He had a 1.95 ERA, 1,444 strikeouts. He averaged 288.8 strikeouts per season. He pitched a perfect game and four no hitters. He won three Cy Young Awards. He had three pitching triple crowns. He won two world championships. He, uh, he just dominated, quite honestly, dominated the game until uh, 1966. Uh, after 66, he retired because of the arthritis in his arm. Um, if you ever wanna understand about Sandy Koufax, read this book. This book by Jane Le Levy is a fantastic book. Tells you about the man, tells you about um, how much pain he endured every day to uh, to be the pitcher that he was, um, and he dominated the first half of the 60s. But he wasn't the only one. Pitchers continued to dominate, and 1968 was the year of the pitcher. In 1968, there were seven pitchers with ERAs under 2.0. There were seven pitchers that won 20 games. There were five no-hitters and one perfect game. Um, and the perfect game, that was thrown by this guy, Jim Catfish Hunter. He threw the perfect game. Um, in addition to Catfish Hunter, Phil Reagan of the Dodgers won 12 games and saved 25 games for the Dodgers while pitching 134 innings in relief. Think about that, 134 innings in relief. That was pretty awesome. The other guy who had a fantastic uh, season that year was this guy, Louis Tiant. Louis Tiant was 21 and nine. He led the American League with a 1.6 ERA. And he was one of four players that had a streak of over 40 scoreless innings. He had 41 scoreless innings at one point in the season. This gentleman here, Juan Marshall, was 26 and nine that year with a 2.43 ERA. Um, and he completed 30 games. He threw 30 complete games in one season. Just amazing. Then you had Don Drysdell. I told you about the streak. Well, Don Drysdell set the all-time streak of 58 and two-thirds innings that season. Um, couple couple stories about that, right? One, um, at one point during the, the uh, streak, the bases were loaded and he hit Dick Dietz with a pitch that would have uh, walked in the, a run and broke the streak. But the umpire at the time um, said Dick Dietz did not try to get out of the way. So um, he, I think he was called out, actually. And the streak continued. And then after, he, um, after his sixth straight complete game, which got him to 54 uh, scoreless innings, Bobby Kennedy actually um, talked about him in his campaign speech. Um, and then Kennedy, uh, unfortunately, was assassinated probably, you know, less than an hour later, leaving, uh, leaving uh, the hotel uh, by Sirhan Sirhan. And um, 
Drysdale, they say, he carried a copy of that tape with him everywhere he went. When he traveled on the road, years later, he became a broadcaster, carried a, a copy of that tape with him. And um, fortunately, Drysdale uh, died of a heart attack and was found um, found in his hotel room. And that tape was, uh, was with him at the time. So just a, a little side story on that. Um, and then the big, uh, the two big uh, performances in 1968 was, uh, one was Denny McLean, right? Denny McLean um, was the last pitcher to win 30 games. He went 31 and six that year. He had um, a 1.96 ERA. He had 28 complete games. Not only did he win the Cy Young, but he was the MVP for that year. So, um, and quite honestly, it was probably the second best performance by a pitcher that year because you also had this gentleman, Bob Gibson, who uh, Bob Gibson was 22 and nine with a 1.12 ERA. So think about that. His ERA was a half run better than Louis Tiant, who was at a 1.68. That 1.12 is a modern day record. Um, you know. And it was just amazing. He had 13 shutouts. He was also the MVP in the Cy Young that year. And, uh, you know, some people would say, well, how can you be that good and lose nine games? Well, in the nine games that he lost, the Cardinals gave him 12 runs. 12, uh, 12 runs. Supported him with 12 runs. So he probably had a good shot at winning, you know, between 25 and 30 games. Had he would, got, had he would have gotten any kind of support from his team. The other thing about Gibson, I would tell you, like Koufax, he was a big game pitcher. As a matter of fact, in the World Series in the set in the 60s, he lost his first and his last game, but in between he didn't lose. He went 7 and 2 with a 1.89 ERA, two shutouts, and I believe he he held the record for 17 strikeouts in one game. So Bob Gibson was uh, just a monster, monster in 1968 in the year of the pitcher. But I would tell you the one guy that doesn't get um, enough credit is this guy right here, and that is Juan Marshall. Because as good as everybody was in the 60s, this guy was the winningest pitcher in the 60s. So when you look over the decade, he won um, almost, he won 27 more games than Gibson, almost 54 more games than uh, Koufax, for, uh, 35 more games than Drysdale. He won 191 games in the, in the 60s. So he averaged 19.1 wins a season. Um, he won 20 games six times. He uh, won 25 games three times. One of the best stories about him was, uh, and there's no fit footage of this game, but at one point during a season, he and Warren Spahn hooked up. And that Horan Spahn was 42 years of age at this time, and Marischal was 25. And they pitched a 16-inning game where they both went the, the distance. Marischal threw 227 pitches in that game. Spahn threw 201. Think about that. We're talking 16-inning game here now. Um, Marischal, would, in the dugout, would say to his uh, team, that man's 42 years old, I'm 25. I don't come out till he comes out. Um, and in the bottom of the 16th, uh, Willie Mays hit a home run to win the game for him. But uh, one of the great games, and unfortunately there's no footage of that game. Um, and the thing about um, Marischal is he just, you know, he he didn't win a Cy Young at all. And winning his pitcher in the decade, didn't win a Cy Young. You know, unfortunately, his two best seasons in 1966, he was 25 and six with a 2.23 ERA and 25 complete games. But Koufax was 27 and nine that year with a 1.73 ERA. And then in 68, you know, he was 26 and nine, like I said, with a 2.43 ERA, but Gibson had that magical season. So he didn't win a Cy Young. He didn't make it to the postseason, so he didn't um, get the credit that he deserves, but he may be the most underrated great pitcher of all time because he dominated in the 60s along with Gibson and along with Koufax. He may have been the most dominant pitcher for the entire decade. Uh, you know, and another stat that I think is really cool with him is uh, 
He has more complete games, 244, than he has wins, 243. So there you have it. That's a look at what I think is the decade of the pitchers. I think it's a it was a, a cool thing to research. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Appreciate you watching. Take care and uh, stay safe. Keep collecting. Take care.